September 8th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 29 and 30 from the Old Testament. Ariel is good as dead. Ariel, the town David besieged. Keep observing your annual rituals. Celebrate your festivals on schedule. I will threaten Ariel and she will mourn intensely and become like an altar hearth before me. I will lay siege to you on all sides. I will besiege you with troops. I will raise siege works against you. You will fall. While lying on the ground, you will speak. From the dust where you lie, your words will be heard. Your voice will sound like a spirit speaking from the underworld. From the dust, you will chirp as if muttering an incantation. But the horde of invaders will be like fine dust. The horde of tyrants like chaff that is blown away. It will happen suddenly in a flash. Judgment will come from the Lord who commands armies, accompanied by thunder, earthquake, and a loud noise, by a strong gale, a windstorm, and a consuming flame of fire. It will be like a dream, a night vision. There will be a horde from all the nations that fight against Ariel, those who attack her and her stronghold and besiege her. It will be like a hungry man dreaming that he is eating, only to awaken and find that his stomach is empty, it will be like a thirsty man dreaming that he is drinking, only to awaken and find that he is still weak and his thirst unquenched. So it will be for the horde from all the nations that fight against Mount Zion. You will be shocked and amazed. You are totally blind. They are drunk, but not because of wine. They stagger, but not because of beer. For the Lord has poured out on you a strong urge to sleep deeply. He has shut your eyes, the prophets and covered your heads, the seers. To you, this entire prophetic revelation is like words in a sealed scroll. When they hand it to one who can read and say, read this, he responds, I can't because it is sealed. Or when they hand the scroll to one who can't read and say, read this, he says, I can't read. The sovereign master says, these people say they are loyal to me. They say wonderful things about me, but they are not really loyal to me. Their worship consists of nothing but man-made ritual. Therefore, I will again do an amazing thing for these people, an absolutely extraordinary deed. Wise men will have nothing to say. The sages will have no explanation. Those who try to hide their plans from the Lord are as good as dead, who do their work in secret and boast, who sees us, who knows what we're doing. Your thinking is perverse. Should the potter be regarded as clay? Should the thing made say about his maker, he didn't make me? Or should the pottery say about the potter, he doesn't understand? In just a very short time, Lebanon will turn into an orchard, and the orchard will be considered a forest. At that time, the deaf will be able to hear words read from a scroll, and the eyes of the blind will be able to see through deep darkness. The downtrodden will again rejoice in the Lord. The poor among humankind will take delight in the Holy One of Israel. For tyrants will disappear, those who taunt will vanish, and all those who love to do wrong will be eliminated. Those who bear false testimony against a person, who entrap the one who arbitrates at the city gate, and deprive the innocent of justice by making false charges. So this is what the Lord, the one who delivered Abraham, says to the family of Jacob. Jacob will no longer be ashamed. Their faces will no longer show their embarrassment. For when they see their children, whom I will produce among them, they will honor my name. They will honor the Holy One of Jacob. They will respect the God of Israel. Those who stray morally will gain understanding. Those who complain will acquire insight. The rebellious children are as good as dead, says the Lord. Those who make plans without consulting me, who form alliances without consulting my spirit, and thereby compound their sin. They travel down to Egypt without seeking my will, seeking Pharaoh's protection and looking for safety in Egypt's protective shade. But Pharaoh's protection will bring you nothing but shame, and the safety of Egypt's protective shade nothing but humiliation. Though his officials are in Zoan, and his messengers arrive at Haines, all will be put to shame because of a nation that cannot help them, who cannot give them aid or help, but only shame and disgrace. This is a message about the animals in the Negev. 
through a land of distress and danger inhabited by lionesses and roaring lions, by snakes and darting adders. They transport their wealth on the back of donkeys, their riches on the humps of camels to a nation that cannot help them. Egypt is totally incapable of helping. For this reason, I call her proud one who is silenced. Now go write it down on a tablet in their presence. Inscribe it on a scroll so that it might be preserved for a future time as an enduring witness. For these are rebellious people. They are lying children, children unwilling to obey the Lord's law. They say to the visionary, see no more visions. And to the seers, don't relate messages to us about what is right. Tell us nice things. Relate deceptive messages. Turn aside from the way, stray off the path, remove from our presence the Holy One of Israel. For this reason, this is what the Holy One of Israel says. You have rejected this message. You trust instead in your ability to oppress and trick and rely on that kind of behavior. So this sin will become your downfall. You will be like a high wall that bulges and cracks and is ready to collapse. It crumbles suddenly in a flash. It shatters in pieces like a clay jar so shattered to bits that none of it can be salvaged. Among its fragments, one cannot find a shard large enough to scoop a hot coal from a fire or to skim off water from a cistern. For this is what the Master, the Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, If you repented and patiently waited for me, you would be delivered. If you calmly trusted in me, you would find strength, but you are unwilling. You say, No, we will flee on horses, so you will indeed flee. You say we will ride on fast horses, so your pursuers will be fast. One thousand will scurry at the battle cry of one enemy soldier. At the battle cry of five enemy soldiers, you will all run away until the remaining few are as isolated as a flagpole on a mountaintop or a signal flag on a hill. For this reason, the Lord is ready to show you mercy. He sits on his throne ready to have compassion on you. Indeed, the Lord is a just God. All who wait for him in faith will be blessed. For people will live in Zion. In Jerusalem you will weep no more. When he hears your cries of despair, he will indeed show you mercy. When he hears it, he will respond to you. The sovereign master will give you distress to eat and suffering to drink, but your teachers will no longer be hidden. Your eyes will see them. You will hear a word spoken behind you saying, This is the correct way. Walk in it whether you are heading to the right or to the left. You will desecrate your silver-plated idols and your gold-plated images. You will throw them away as if they were a menstrual rag, saying to them, Get out! He will water the seed you plant in the ground, and the ground will produce crops in abundance. At that time, your cattle will graze in wide pastures. The oxen and donkeys used in plowing will eat seasoned feed winnowed with a shovel and a pitchfork. On every high mountain and every high hill there will be streams flowing with water at the time of great slaughter when the fortified towers collapse. The light of the full moon will be like the sun's glare and the sun's glare will be seven times brighter like the light of seven days when the Lord binds up his people's fractured bones and heals their severe wound. Look, the name of the Lord comes from a distant place in raging anger and awesome splendor. He speaks angrily, and his word is like a destructive fire. His battle cry overwhelms like a flooding river that reaches one's neck. He shakes the nations in a sieve that isolates the chaff. He puts a bit into the mouth of the nations and leads them to destruction. You will sing as you do in the evening when you are celebrating a festival. You will be happy like one who plays a flute as he goes to the mountain of the Lord, the rock who shelters Israel. The Lord will give a mighty shout and intervene in power with furious anger and flaming destructive fire, with a driving rainstorm and hailstones. Indeed, the Lord's shout will shatter Assyria. He will beat them with a club. Every blow from his punishing cudgel with which the Lord will beat them will be accompanied by music from the tambourine and harp, and he will attack them with his weapons. For the burial place is already prepared. It has been made deep and wide for the king. The firewood is piled high on it. The Lord's breath, like a stream flowing with brimstone, will ignite it.
God, these are some of my favorite chapters in Isaiah. Just hearing the passion and the power and the control and the sovereignty of you. Ah, I just love it. And I also think about if you are that big, at least the big that we can comprehend, and you are that mighty and you are that glorious, then why do we keep putting all of our efforts and our time and our money into things that are wasteful and fleeting here on earth? That ch chapter uh, 30, right around verse 6, where he's talking about where they're transporting the wealth on the back of the donkeys through a land of distress and danger and lionesses and lions and snakes and adders. When the Judean embassy is taking that payment to the court of Egypt and Isaiah says, their riches on the humps of camels to a nation that cannot help them. And I think so much of us, all the things that we waste throughout the day, our time, our energy, our talents, our gifts, our uh, money, in all of these things that truly can't help us they're going to nothing to just be wasteful to be wasted um, time when we veg out in front of the tv uh, a lot of people are like oh i need that time to you know gather my thoughts well i'm pretty sure isaiah and paul and other people like that never had to veg out now granted you talk about days of rest and that's completely different but filling our minds with worldly things and it's hard to find non-worldly things on tv it's just one of those very parallel things to these people sending money of um, asking for support from a place that couldn't help them only you could help them except they kept turning towards towards these other people pharaoh um, countries um, groups of people and, and paying them off. And you're like, you just needed to turn to me. You just need to trust in me. I think about who we trust in our world. Not only giving up our time to wasteful things uh, like TV, but also who we trust in our world as opposed to you. Um, you are very clear about things in the Bible. And it's not that we shouldn't have um, Christian advisors. I highly recommend having an accountability group around you. But sometimes we spend so much time fussing about a situation, especially on Facebook or Twitter or other social places, or maybe constantly going out to coffee with people and complaining about the same thing over and over again. We keep bringing our problems to people instead of taking them to you, God. And you're like, I can help you. I am here for you. I want you to bring me your yoke. I want you to allow me to help you with these things. And yet we talk about them more than we pray about them. I also think about the gifts that we use, whether it be blessings of money that come into our life or the talents and gifts that you've given us as part of the body and body of Christ. I think about one of the gifts you've given me is this odd knowledge of the online world and you have blessed me with a business with that, which is incredibly awesome. But that business is also a ministry. I actually get to talk to people in that business about you. I've prayed with them before. They seek me out for counsel about you. I, I know very little, <laughs> but I do my best to talk to them. Uh, so my business, through the gifts you've given me, has become a ministry. And now I have been honored to to start daily video bible which is a uh, full use of a lot of the skills that i have online i think about friends i have who are in jobs that they hate and they go to work every day and they're grouchy and they're grumpy and they whine all the time about the job that they have instead of one being thankful that they have a job especially in this economy and two just looking around and taking the opportunity of why you actually put them there that there is intentional reasons why they're in that spot at that time but sometimes when you put us in those blessings we take up so much time whining and wanting to see them in a different way uh, sort of like uh, the Judean embassy uh, seeing things in a different way wanting to take on uh, Egypt or gain a uh, protection with Egypt uh, same thing with uh, things that we don't like in our lives 
you're trying to give us blessings by giving us jobs and ways to pay bills and opportunities to talk to people about you. And instead we focus in on the bad things. We focus in on the worldly things of that job, the hours, the people, uh, the reprimands, the people we work with, whatever that looks like. God, I don't want my blessings you give me and talents and gifts and the money that you bring into my life and my time. I don't want it to be wasted on worldly things. I want you to be able to use those things and for me not to hoard them and hand deliver them to other areas of my life instead of turning them over to you. You are the reason I'm here. You are the reason that I have these gifts. You are the reason that I have all these blessings in my life. I know that following your path and your will and allowing those gifts and blessings to be used by you is a hard path. I get that. And sometimes I squirm a lot on that path. But God, I also know it is the right path. You know, Isaiah in this chapter goes on to say that the people ask for them to quit telling them the hard stuff. The things that were hard to hear, the things that were hard to do. Tell us nice things. Tell us things that make us happy. Tell us things that don't remind us that we have to work hard at this. And God, I'm not asking for that in the slightest. I am truly begging you to just provide me strength on this path because I want my life to be so fluid that you can use me in any way possible, that I have no filters in place to stop something from going forward that you need to have happen in your kingdom. Now, I know I can't stop anything that you want to have go forward. Uh, just like you say in the Bible that if you're not going to testify about me, I'll make the rocks do it. Um, but I just don't ever want my life to not be something that you can use for your kingdom, God. I just open up my arms and my heart and my mind and, and the path before me. That it becomes each step for you, each step for your people, each step for what you need me to do. Uh, whether my time here on earth is for tonight or for the next couple decades, whatever that looks like to you. God, I don't want to waste anything that you've given me. It is all yours. It should be all turned back over to you and to be used for your glory. God, I am here. Use me. Send me. Whatever it is that you need me to do, I know that you'll provide me the strength and the opportunity to do it. Allow my heart, God, allow my heart to follow that path. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Thank you.